Top of the morning to you, Eric Zimmerman with Adams Camera Company Realtors uh, with Team Zimmerman. Today we are working on a shepherd's pie in honor of St. Patrick's Day here in March. I'm gonna run through kind of a traditional uh, classic, maybe with a couple little twists that uh, you know not everybody does when they make it. I have some potatoes started just to save some time and they're about to come off the water. I just boiled some, peeled and boiled some potatoes and I'm gonna be making mashed potatoes to top it off. So, I'm actually gonna go ahead and strain those and get that started. They actually kind of get sticky, so this is a way to get some really nice fluffy mashed potatoes. Get us a little salt, and use some already ground black pepper today. So now I'm just going to slowly add a couple knobs of butter at a time. Anybody who knows me knows I like butter. So I'm going to add about a stick of butter there to those. And I'm also going to add a little bit of heavy cream. You can certainly add milk if you prefer. And one thing I'm going to do for this particular dish, I'm going to add cheddar cheese to the mashed potatoes. A lot of people put it on top of the shepherd's pie. I'm actually going to incorporate it right into the potatoes. I just think that uh, turns out really good and that way you can still get the nice browning effect on top of the potatoes. And I think that ought to do it. The next thing we need to do is work on uh, the actual the meat of this meat and potato dish. I have ground lamb and also some ground meat, uh, ground beef. If you don't like lamb you can certainly you know use all beef if you'd like. Um, you can use a combination. Traditionally though, lamb is a, is a traditional ingredient in it. Um, I'm going to add some fresh thyme, garlic, some fresh onion, and some fresh carrots that I have diced up. Uh, once this gets cooked, I'll add in a little bit of that tomato paste. So let's get started. Start with the meat. start browning this meat. And once we get it pretty much 90% cooked, that's where I'm going to add the, uh, the carrots and the onion and garlic. Okay, we've got the meat probably cooked about 90%. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste. I'd say a, a heavy tablespoon. Also going to add in our carrots because these do take a while to cook. And I have a cup there worth of carrots. And I'm going to put in the garlic. There's about four cloves there. And we want to cook out that tomato paste, kind of get that raw, raw taste out of it. That's going to help thicken this up for us. Also give us a little bit of flavor and add a little bit of acidity to it too. I'm also going to add about a cup and a half of onion. And we're going to go ahead and let this cook for a little while. In this situation, what I do, I'm going to add a little bit of this better than bouillon. It's basically a beef base. It's going to give the flavor. You can use beef broth for this dish. I, however, have a secret twist that I do on mine, and that, my friends, is Guinness. So I figure why use lame beef broth when you can use beer, right? 
So this is what I'm going to be using in lieu of uh, beef stock or beef broth in our dish. But to get a little bit of that, that flavor, I'm going to add a little bit of the beef broth to it. Or excuse me, the beef base. You can see everything starting to kind of come together. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to utilize a little bit of those drippings from the meat. I'm going to add a little bit of flour just to help thicken it too. Uh, I don't think, maybe a, maybe a, a heavy tablespoon should be more than enough. And again, this is going to help us thicken this up. It's going to help us make a, a nice kind of brown sauce. The cool thing about this dish, it actually comes together really quickly. It doesn't take, it doesn't take hours and hours to do, nor does it take a ton of ingredients. I think most people have, I think pretty much everything to make this in their refrigerator at home. So it's a great dish. I know kids always enjoy it. At least mine do. And you can even make it in advance put it in the refrigerator and uh, you know, pull it out and just put it in the oven when you get home from work and, and brown it up and warm it up and it's good to go. You could probably keep it in the fridge for a day or two before you actually put it in the oven. So nice versatile dish that way too. I think now I'm gonna add the secret ingredient here. thicken up a little bit. Looks like it's going to take the whole can. While this kind of slowly simmers, I'm going to, I'm going to add a little, little bit of thyme in here just for flavor. So I'll let this, let this cook for a few minutes. Okay. So, we reduce down, the flavor's concentrated, saucy. What I'm gonna do now is add about two cups of frozen peas. If you don't like peas, don't add peas. But it's definitely traditional, so we're gonna add some peas to the mix. Next thing we're gonna do is show you how to plate this thing up for the oven. obviously just throw the potatoes on top. I can't do that. I'm going to put my potatoes in the pastry bag here and we're going to put them on there pretty. That way when they brown up in the oven it'll be tasty and good looking. So I think this will look pretty cool. You can do, you can put a tip on if you wanted to. But there we go. Okay, so I have the oven set at 380. Gonna pop these in. If you're making it as I am right now, where it's going directly in the oven. Obviously, everything's already hot. Uh, so what you could do is, now that the oven's preheated, I'm actually just gonna throw the broiler on, brown the tops, and we're ready to serve. If you have it in the refrigerator overnight, obviously, you may wanna pull it out maybe a half hour, 45 minutes before you cook it would be ideal. Uh, let it kind of come up to room temperature. Then it's probably gonna take a good 45 minutes in the oven uh, to get everything warmed all the way through. So I'm gonna switch gears here and go to broil. 
and we'll get this all GBD, golden brown and delicious. Okay, well look at that. There we go. Voila. Chef Boyard Z. At it again. Bon appetit.